Oh, hello. This is Ezekiel James Hampton, and I'm a guest host on The Loud Spot. Hey, everybody. What's up? This is Andrew W. Boss, and you're listening to The Loud Spot. I've done a whole show and not hit record before. Damn it. Dude, we did. That was one of them was mine because we had to redo the very first one. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> there you All go. Right. The Loud Spot podcast uses adult humor and adult language in its broadcast. It may be unsuitable for younger audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Also, we are idiots. Please don't take anything. We say offensive or the heart. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Loud Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian, hanging out with my producer, Sam, of course. And we have a guest on tonight. Ezekiel James Hampton is joining us on the show. And really, he... what? Well, hold on, stop. Three names? Zeke? I said, do you want to go by Zeke or Ezekiel? <laughs> he said Ezekiel James Hampton. Which Jesus. sounds more epic. <laughs> <laughs> Do you play uh, yes flute? Do you happen to play the yes flute? <laughs> Perhaps on occasion. He is, he, uh, is in a, uh, doing a project right now that he calls, I guess, what, Rad Brown, right? Yeah, yeah. That's it's, a pretty cool. Yes. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm gonna. it's linked to because I have a couple other projects. I have an ambient music project called Radagast the Brown. So I figured it's a way to connect it because it's two totally different styles of music. But are you still doing sound light motion picture? Skylight motion picture? Skylight, yeah, whatever. Skylight motion yeah, picture. Yeah, I can usually juggle two at a time. So, you know, eventually there'll be another Skylight motion picture release. But right now, I got, I'm uh, Rad Brown and Rad Against the Brown are the two projects that have albums coming out. Okay. And the album's coming out when? They're both coming out the same week in April. Um, the, uh, the Rad Brown comes out for um, April 19th. Uh, Radagast the Brown ambient music comes out April 17th. Okay, right on. Let's play a clip now. We're gonna play this clip, and you got one of the guys from Nappy Roots to the song with you, right? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, the next single comes out on April 4th. Um, the album itself has 20 tracks, uh, and it's an all star lineup of epic like MCs from a lot of platinum gold record, um, a lot of um, major underground influential uh, groups. So big, like. I'm super stoked. I'm a fan first. And the fact that I get to work with uh, a lot of these um, rappers, it's kind of a big deal for me as a fan. That's cool, man. Let's play one of those clips, Sam. It's uh, your man, Buffalo Steel, from the world famous Navi Roots. Hey, hey. All night, we've seen it all. Keep the dream alive. Get your team involved. From the time you rise to the evening fall. Got to mind your grind and believe you're going to make it. Good gracious, good vibrations. Full off life and good libations. Welcome to Red Brown's Upper Crust Confections. The most sensational record for hip hop's high society. That's cool, man. So all all you do is make the beats right and send them off to these people to write music over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, like the thing I love about the hip hop project is I can take. I'm a super nostalgic person, so I got to take all these, um, like these early audible memories. Uh, a lot of these, like whether it's video games, commercials, songs, uh, and then like compose around it, weave the samples into the original composition just kind of put like a, a pretty sick beat on it. And, um, and then I reach out to these different MCs, give them a whole like portfolio, pick your song, write a song to it. That's cool. And, and the, probably the more bigger names you get, the more other people are willing to do work with you. I would assume. Yes. That was my strategy. It took, it, it, it was hard in the beginning, but once I got a couple of names on board, I absolutely used that to, to help the give me momentum to get others. That's our strategy for the podcast. We try, we try to go after some big people and then, yeah, hey, they've been on the show. Are you better than them? So why don't you come on the show? And sometimes it works and sometimes people just don't want to come on our show. All right. TikTok is supposedly, maybe it's in the Senate right now to get banned again in the United States. I just don't understand. They say that the Chinese government is stealing information from 170 million American TikTok users that are out there. What kind? I, I already know that like certain of elected officials can't use TikTok. That's already a th that's already like a, kind of a rule. I think that has passed that they're wow. not supposed to do. It. So I don't understand what kind of information they're going to steal from a bunch of people dancing. And I like, got TikTok's mostly dancing, isn't it? 
You're on TikTok. What are you? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But but I'm not one of the fake like right. his music. All right, first of all, <laughs> just a reminder to everyone out there in 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 either listening or watching: do not get your information from us. We are not accurate. He does not do his homework, Sebastian. The point, the reason, and the reason why the United States government wants to ban it because it is controlled by the Chinese government. Because the Chinese government, if you have anything, they have to have access to it. And because they have access to it, which means they have access to your personal information if you use TikTok here in the United States. The U.S. government does not like that, apparently. And, of course, with our, our government officials, they're not allowed to use any kind of social media, uh, I think, outside that is, that is not created here in the United States. So it's been a long time coming. So dancing has nothing to do okay. with it, Sebastian. Well, okay. But, I, but I, I, yes, we are on TikTok for the podcast. But here's the deal. I don't care if the Chinese see my information. To me, it doesn't matter. They, I'm on TikTok they, still. I'm yeah, not, they I, have your information. No, sorry. I just say I just assume that our, our our government's probably already doing the same anyway. So I guess yeah, exactly. I feel a little indifferent about it myself. Yeah, I, it, you know, it, it, you guys ever looked at the Patriot uh, Act and exactly. what they can do with that thing? They they already know about you, Sebastian. They knew about you a long time ago before you even left Vacaville. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so they were tracking you down. I, I think what the, well, I think what TikTok's wanting to do or the American government's wanting them to sell uh, a portion of what uh, let the Americans control TikTok here in America. Right. Well, not that right. They, they want they want the, they want TikTok to be to be created a version of it created here in the United States, still called TikTok, still owned by ByteDance, but just not allow the Chinese government to have access or they want to ban it in general here in the United States, much like uh, Mountain Dew in the, in Europe. So and Mountain Dew is not good for you. I, you know, yeah. I don't mind it. I don't mind if it gets banned. Cause I honestly tired of posting to all these different things. Anyways, I, I'm just supposed <laughs> to like one thing. If I put it on Facebook, it automatically goes on hold Instagram. On. Hold on. Hold on. You oh, only post ahead. one spot. You only, for the most part, are only supposed to post to one spot, and that is TikTok on the shorts that I give you. But what instead I get is Sebastian will post on his personal page, which happens to go to his Instagram page. Yeah. I have to go back and delete that real quick, and it's it's hilarious. You only post to one page, remember? It's no, TikTok. I and my personal page. Yeah, that's right. You just kind of do everything else now. Good job. Yeah, Sam. That, that well no, we we already agreed. I said if if that were there it's a lot easier for for me to do it versus you. You're way busier than I am, so. Ezekiel, do you have a TikTok? Yeah, I do. In fact, that's like the only social media channel where I have like one one profile for everything that I do. For like the yeah. three music projects, a wine project, um, so yeah, TikTok. I don't like using it beyond posting. I I don't go, I don't watch videos on there. I just have it because I feel like I have to have it. Do you do like funny videos like Sebastian started to do and was gaining traction and then quit because it happened to be work or anything like that? You know what's funny? I did start like I think my very one of my first posts was trying to be funny, making a funny video. I think I did like a Zoolander parody, but uh, right. ever since then, it's I've just been mostly using it for for music and wine. Yeah, I, I want to get back into doing funny videos though. I like that stuff. Well, Sebastian should too. We forget that that's if you're using it for outside, if you're using it to be serious on that thing, a lot of people will not watch it, and you won't get a lot of traction. Or maybe you will. I don't know. Um, but like. Sebastian loves to watch it purely for the dirt, for the crap, for the filth that's on it. I mean, the dirtier, the better he'll like it. The, um, the more racist he'll like it, the more <laughs> the more socially uh, unacceptable he'll like it. He'll watch it then. But, what, the but if you're wrong. like, hey, I got a bit, I got a business. Come on down to 395 South Fifth Street. You know, check out my business. I change tires. He won't watch that. He'll go right past. He'll go. Yep. You know, you it. know, I think Facebook reels are actually better than TikTok videos. Now, I, I, I'll spend more time watching Facebook reels than I will watching TikTok videos. Yeah, you're you're old. Sir, yeah, I, 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 I still I still watch all my stuff on YouTube, so that must mean I'm I'm pretty old too. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. We're not cool enough. I don't watch YouTube reels so much, but I wonder if you so you know how you can video live like concerts, things like that, right? Right. I want. It's, I I don't know if Facebook like the Mike Tyson fights coming up. Okay, 
And I'm actually, I just bought tickets to go to the Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight. Cause it's in Arlington, Texas, just a few hours from me. And if you video live, I think Facebook would probably stop you from doing that, but I don't know that no. TikTok would. No, it wouldn't. So it wouldn't. You should do, you should do a loud spot yeah. live, uh, live on the scene. Oh, dude, I could do a man on the street. Why <laughs> would you say that, Zeke? Why would you say that? <laughs> that seemed like a good idea. No, it's not a it's never a great idea to have him outside of the box. <laughs> uncontrolled without someone there to help monitor the lighting monitor all this kind of stuff you're not gonna like what you're gonna get is someone dancing in their living room drunk or something like that he's like i'm going live on huh? i'm going live on facebook and youtube oh it's gorilla style it's gorilla style like, it's edgy it's fresh come on no it's not even edgy i wish it was edgy that, that, that would <laughs> yeah. be great what what you get is really bad lighting and really bad narrative in in, in something and then you're like what am i even watching and it's a what train wreck, stay you know, watching it. and we call, we call that organic it's 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 natural it's organic setting oh my you god know, that sounds like pitch it. he he must be from like like the san francisco area He's or something vacaville. like that vacaville yeah <laughs> it's organic <laughs> <laughs> dude so who do you think is gonna win that mike tyson jake paul fight i can't believe mike tyson even agreed to do it to be honest with you i think mike tyson's yeah. gonna kill him it's rigged it's rigged you know this right well who, so who's who's it rigged to win it's gonna be rigged for jake paul to win yeah no I, you know i don't know i don't fall full on saying that it's that it's rigged but i it, i think the world's gonna want tyson and uh, I certainly would be uh, foolish for anybody to try to get in the ring with him. But I do think the fact, what is he, like 60? I think he's like 50, 60. 57, I think. Okay, close to 60. Yeah. I, uh, I, just, I feel like Paul, he's always very selective with who he fights for a reason. He is. It's not that. Guys, you got to read the contract. The contract states a certain thing. Just like the last contract stated that you can not knock Jake out in the first three rounds. Not the last oh, guy what? he just fought. You, got, like, you don't real, know about this? Wolf? Again, folks, we want to we wanna remind everyone, do not get your news source from us. But, but also, like and subscribe. But like and subscribe, that's right. All right, so from the from the start of all this, when he, uh, I think it was, uh, who was it? K, it was it KSI? I can't remember the first guy he fought. Um, a basketball player, right? Nick, was it a basketball player? He did fight a basketball player. I think that was okay. I think that was his first one. Yeah, Kevin so I'm just kidding. It wasn't Kevin Durant. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Katie. That's the only good basketball player Sebastian knows because he was on the <laughs> Oklahoma Thunder. That's that's the only reason why. No, um, but a lot of his contracts state certain things. You cannot uh you cannot knock Jake out in the first three rounds, and then from round three to round, you know, six, um uh, you uh, you're allowed to get knocked out that way there. People get their money's worth, those kind of things. I don't know what kind of validity to it because the contract doesn't come across my desk. I'm just getting it, you know, from hearsay via TikTok, via Facebook, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But these are stipulations. The same thing like uh, uh, Conor McGregor. Remember Conor McGregor? Yeah. You know, remember he fought him? Or no, no that was uh, Jake uh, uh, Mayweather. Him. Mayweather. Sorry. Sorry. It was Mayweather. Um, but that's where they got the idea was the was the Mayweather fight where Conor McGregor couldn't uh, couldn't do certain things um, and had to wait to a certain a certain point. And then after that, Mayweather just had, you know, Mayweather just kind of did his thing, what he's good at and and, and uh, kind of doped the ropes and then let him get worn out because he's not used to going nine rounds uh, of boxing. So, um same thing with the Jake Paul thing. And that's why everyone's getting upset and going, look, if you let Mike, T Mike Tyson should knock him out first round. If he still has that stamina and that power. It looks um, like he does from the training videos I've been watching. I mean, I wouldn't want to get hit by him. I don't get hit by I him. I mean, I will. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, I'll protect my rib cage from that man. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately it's one of those things where age is a factor. We can all agree. The older we get, um, we don't, we think we can, we think we can move pretty fast, but, uh, I, I don't know about that. And, and he, and Jake Paul is a younger guy and no discredit to Jake Paul. Jake Paul is a very decent, really pretty good boxer. I, everyone just keeps saying box a real boxer, your age 
and let's see what happens. And, and yeah. but he won't. He, he, from what I saw, it looked like he was kind of slow. It looked like he wasn't as fast as Mike Tyson. I mean, faster than me, but not as fast as Mike Tyson is. I well, feel they, like this this fight it's going to be like Rocky Six, where where you got an older Rocky who he's going to lose some speed. Mike Tyson's not going to be as fast as he was when he was in his twenties. So Tommy he's got to Gunn, focus on those it? the hurt bombs. Oh man, right. Tommy the Gun. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Gun, which was Tommy Morrison. That's um, right, the actual boxer. You ever watched Rocky? Rocky uh, Six. Yeah. I've seen it. Like blonde hair. Ro- blonde hair. Ro- that's, that's Rocky Five. Oh, and is that I'm a champion. Five? That is the yeah. That's Rocky Five, and I'm a champion for that movie because that movie people shit on that movie, and uh, it was I, great. I it, was, yeah. it was yeah, it was great. Yeah. It's the only Rocky movie where he doesn't fight in the ring, and he does. He has a street fight. Right. Oh, okay, that's right. I, I need to get my Rockies right. I have to. I have to go back and rewatch apparently all of them. <laughs> it's not the Russian. It's not the Russian. I will break you. I'm go- I am going to go to the fight. We bought tickets today. Me and David are going. Oscar and the Birdman. We're going to go uh, check out the concert or the concert, the fight. Everyone's like, "Why? It's going to be a quick fight." I don't care. You know what? Mike Tyson's probably his last I know- fight ever, and it's in Arlington, Texas. I could drive over there from here. So. Right. And I know you didn't pay for it. I know David paid for it because you will not, you will not, you will not bust out the money. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so there is some truth to that, but, but not, not all of it's true because I was going to pay for it. But then he said, well, here, just take my credit card and just pay for it and then pay him back. So I paid him back already. Okay. Okay. So so we got our own tickets. It was just, so we could sit next to each other. It was just easier for him to put on his credit card. Uh, so I don't have to hear it and get complained to about it. It's just right, easier right. To, for one person to buy it. That I way. just know how cheap you are, mofo. And it'd be like, I can't, he can't buy me a plane ticket over there. I have to buy my own plane ticket to come in town for events. But I'll just stay at he, my house. Is, is that just any better? Pay for it and you write it off. You spooning and me every right night off. and you're, he keeps spooning me every night and asking me to take my underwear off and I'm not comfortable <laughs> with that. So. <laughs> Let's play the first song as we get on with the show. We got some music news coming up after this. Who is this, Sam? We got uh, uh, the new song from A Killer's Confession uh, from who's been on the show. And the song is called Greed right here on the Loud Spot. Stop it.
Hella gold dust vibes. Uh, <laughs> that, yes. See, he, gold he texted me, dust. He texted me while we were while I was playing a picture of gold dust. Is that Dustin Rhodes, wasn't it? That that did. Yeah, it was yeah. Dustin Rhodes. <laughs> Classic. You know, I was watching WWE the other night, and uh, there's another one of them roads that's uh, in, interesting Cody. now, huh? Yeah. Cody. Yeah, Rhodes. Cody. Yeah, um, Cody. Yeah. He's been. He's been. He's oh. been. A, I'm not even a wrestling fan, but yeah, he's been <laughs> around for a while. He's been around. He's blonde hair. You, you know, it's going back to TikTok real quick. If if TikTok does get banned, we got to change the little TikTok thing on our emblem at the bottom of the screen and put just. We need a Spotify one on there. I think we probably should have that on there. We should, but who really goes to any of our social media? If you're no going one. to our social media, nobody. They don't. We got three people: your mom and dad. That's it. Yeah, and Ezekiel apparently, <laughs> and then and maybe Stacia. That's it. That's three people. That's, no, she doesn't. Who. No, she doesn't want to listen to me talk anymore. She oh, she doesn't. Talk <laughs> she at home all the time. She doesn't want to right. listen to my podcast. That's for damn sure. That's right. Something a lot of people don't want to listen to is Blue Ridge uh, Music Festival. Um, uh, is is apparently was selling tickets. If you guys remember last year, they had a big problem with their with their uh, festival. Um, it just it, but it was actually the year before that as well, where it get there was a lot of fall throughs, and then last year was definitely a debacle when it came to that. Um, so apparently there was uh, they were selling tickets for twenty twenty four, but. They claim that they are not selling tickets for 2024, and instead, you have a lot of people going, wait, you still haven't even refunded the money from 2023 yeah. uh, when that happened, so how could you be selling tickets for 2024? And that's when they came out with an official statement that that uh, somewhere along, it ain't even on their website or on their um, their Facebook page. I can't, I, I didn't even go to their website. But it says that uh, supposedly the hearsay is that they're not selling tickets. We don't know where this information came from, that they're selling tickets for 2024. It must be someone else. And all I could think about is, you know, the event that you just had, the tattoo convention. Maybe mm -hmm. it's someone out there scamming. So um, oh, it could be. So I the, the official statement is. Uh, somewhere it's not on Facebook, but somewhere out there that they're not selling tickets for 2024. And if you buy a ticket to Blue Ridge Rock Festival for 2024, I think that's on you uh, at the end of the day. I don't think this event is going to happen. And if you do and and it doesn't happen, like everyone assume it does, it, it will. Then I, I, you know, that it's like buying Firefest tickets right now. That's, uh, you know. Yeah. Do you really? I wasn't going to say anything, but that's the first thing that yeah. popped in my head was Fire that's Fest. Exact. And that one is true. He is really selling Fire Fest again. And I yeah, don't know I why. So. What I don't understand is these scammers are out there. People are buying tickets from them like they did with my tattoo convention. They're buying right. stuff from scammers. Do your research, people, before you right. buy a ticket. If, 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 if you know Blue Ridge was canceled, I can't believe they're doing it again. If that comes to your head, right. go to their website, check it out because they'll be, they should be selling, uh, there should be a link on the website to buy tickets. First of all, if that doesn't mm -hmm. exist, probably not doing it. And I'm not surprised they're not doing it again in 2024 because I don't know how you bounce back from what a shit show it was last year. I mean, I had a friend that Robert went there and he was there and, he wanted a refund. I don't think he ever got his refund. No. A lot of people, I say 90% of people didn't get it. And I'm just spitballing on that because everyone I've talked to said they didn't still haven't received a, a refund. Um, I haven't talked to a lot of the bands, whether they, they got at least their deposits um, in um, and, and they passed, you know, because a lot of times what happens is you have to send in deposits way before the uh, for bands way before the event. And, but if it was a, you know, I'm assuming now this day they can do wire, they can wire money a lot easier and a lot faster than sending hard, old school checks like we used to send back in the day. Um, but if they did send old school checks, that's probably a sign too. So, um, but I hope everyone uh, at least everyone gets a refund and bands got at least a deposit. But how many bands were out there and had to go through the same thing as fans did and cancel up and pack it up and not have a performance and not get the rest? Yeah. So, yeah. Do you read like Sebastian says? Do your research. Do so. your research. What's what's Fire Fest? What's that? Oh, I don't know what that go. is. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's two. I know there's at least two great documentaries that came out around the same time about it. 
Um, it, I mean, there's lots of names like Ja Rule was uh, mm-hmm. apparently one of the owners. Um, but there is this music festival that was meant to be for the most elite. Um, and essentially the people that can afford uh, a music festival ticket that goes, it's on like an island, right? Somewhere in the right. Bahamas, I think. Um, right. And people paid an exorbitant amount to go to this festival. They have this bill um, that had all, all these famous names on it, uh, all these famous artists on it. They had, they were paying uh, influencers. And I think some of the Kardashians were involved where they were yeah. promoting it. Um, so people were paying for these tickets and they go out there. And ultimately just the, the, the actual production of the event was, uh, was barely there. Uh, this yeah. supposed to be like having these like fine, oh, these like I amazing lunches that were like bologna. Now he remembers. Lunches. Now he remembers. See that that's the thing is you got to say some key but, words and he'll remember this stuff. But when you when you start saying the Kardashians and I was like I remember something about this and I remember yeah. those complaining about it. So so they were serving bologna sandwiches to like a bunch <laughs> right. of these rich people. These They're rich fine people don't have bologna with- sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, the fine dining was consisted of bologna sandwiches, a slice of cheese, and maybe one piece of bread and some kind of like fruit or vegetable in, in a yeah. styrofoam tray. Yeah. Artisan yeah. chips you know, you, plates. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you're a single dude, though, and you got a credit card and you don't make a whole lot of money, you might find yourself a sugar mama over there, you know? I, the- uh, I doubt that. It's the reverse of sugar mama. Uh, 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 girls looking for a sugar daddy. Or maybe a sugar... Man, some, I, some, I don't know. Some some old old rich ladies. I almost said old rich white ladies, but some old rich cougar, ladies. Cougar. <laughs> some, you know, the, the some, crazy thing some is old, some, old, you, some cougars, some cougars. Uh, you know, they might hey, like it, a little uh we, little young man. We're old enough now to wear names. If you have names, like say if there were names on the bill, like Ja Rule or Snoop Dogg. Um, the, the the people that go to these shows are like our our parents' age. Like people think that's mm-hmm. like you know, like, oh, yes, I'm going to go to this, the Snoop Dogg show or the Ja Rule show. And it's like, you uh, you condemned this music back when it actually came out. And now because, right. like, they're, like, household names, it's like people get excited. Like, you know, like old white people get excited to go, um, <laughs> you know, see these, you know, you know, former gangster rappers, whatever. And to me, it's just, it's yeah. kind of ironic. I'm going to Bone Stung in Harmony. Watch out. I'm going to get loose, get crazy. And it's like, they're all boom, 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 boom. Yeah. 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 So I'm pretty uh, sure yeah. it was not allowed to listen to this as a kid. And you're like my parents' age. <laughs> but but, hip, but hip hop's turned into, it wasn't when we were kids, you know, it hip hop wasn't really pop culture like it is today. Like now yeah. it's, it's glorified where there were still like, you know, with NWA and it was, it was, more it was a the media didn't put a good spotlight on hip hop. No, they try they try to make it changed. always now it's changed. yeah now, now they tried it back in the 90s. They try to make it so gangster rap, but now we know there's difference between rap, hip hop, cerebral rap, you know, all these kind of things. Um, there's different genres, subgenres within the the hip hop uh community and the rap community like mumble rap right we all call it mumble rap it's actually called something else That's in the meantime let, let's take a look at uh, let's take our next music break uh, we have another band that was on here uh damien was on here from a band called red star and they're new he's got a new song with twisted out called bad decisions so let's take a look at that right here on the loud spot Complex, and I'm sick and tired of the process. I just 
intuition And that's the way that I'm living Juggling bad decisions So fuck the options I'm giving It's like the pieces ain't fitting I'm headed for an early grave I'm alive and digging with You gave the power to a devil Now you're stuck in his brains And he just put you on the shelf If you ain't playing this game And you were supposed to be The next big thing as they see But now you're nothing But another bad decision today Rock seems to be making a really big comeback right now. It's mm-hmm. huge. A lot uh, uh, from Ashes to News doing it. Uh, I Prevail is doing it. Red Stars doing. It. I think the band that's coming on later. Hopefully they come on. They're kind yeah, of they're doing, doing it. A lot of bands are doing rap rock right now. It's it died down for a little bit, like in the like two thousand. I don't know, five or whatever. I'm just making updates. So Again, I'm- we're going to remind everyone, do, if you're getting your news and you're getting your information from us, uh, it's only opinions and it doesn't matter. And it usually stinks. Is, is it not making a comeback? I mean, Hollywood and Dead always kind of did it a little it's bit. It's always like, been there. It's always been there. It just goes through cycles of who gets the push from the record label, who it, who has an album that's they think is worthy, a lot of radio play, those kind of things. That's what that's what happens. It's the same thing. Metalcore, a lot of people say metalcore is coming back. And I was like, okay. I mean, that's that's it. Some people say punk is on its way back. Um, I don't know. I I mean, I haven't listened to a punk band hit uh, terrestrial radio in ever, but all right. Well, I mean, well, and yeah, not not recently. No, I think you're gonna Grand say Green Day. Day? No, are you no. gonna say Green Day? <laughs> okay, you can't even count Green Drop Day. Dropkick Murphys, anymore. maybe, but Dropkick Murphys is a novelty. Well, so is Rancid. Rancid, I mean, but they're yeah. those are older bands, you know. Like no one like right. new Alkaline Trio. That they're not really hitting terrestrial radio. Actually, probably not. Um, no, they're one of their new songs that we've played here uh, within this last month uh, is on, Okay, but it's not on, I, I wouldn't say it's on like, you know, iHeartMedia, the major ones, iHeartMedia, Cumulus, uh, Clear Channel. It's probably, it's probably on a secondary radio market a lot more than, cause I, I, I still have yet to hear it on, on the iHeart uh, station that I listen to. That's, you know, quote unquote alternative. So. Right, right. Well, speaking of rap rock, uh, Lincoln yes. Parks, uh, one of their bass players, original bass players, is suing them for yeah. a whole lot of money because he's not getting credited uh, on their albums. They, I guess Lincoln Park released a box set, right. and they had over twenty songs with their bass player on it. No, that this guy, his name is uh, Kyle Christner. Christner, yep. And he's not getting credited, and I don't blame him for going after Lincoln Park, saying, "Hey, dude." They, they, they didn't. They didn't even re-record the bass lines. They just used his bass lines. That that's what he's claiming, and then yeah, they're claiming, claiming the exact opposite that they that they they've already squared up with him before he left, and yeah. that it, everything was fine. Um, and I think it's actually come out that it's actually the case has been dropped now. So, oh really? 
Yeah. Yeah. It, well, it's always hilarious when you send this and then I go back and I check and then it's already been like cleared. But I just let you go. Yeah. I, well, because I send you the articles about like a, know, week. a week before we do this. And sometimes within that week, things change. I never had done my research on what I'm going to talk about. I guess I probably should. Well, I just looked it up today and I didn't see that. But the article I read today might have been from a week ago. Right. Right. I don't know. Ezekiel, do you have any 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 people in your bandmate that bandmates that uh, that have been kicked out waiting to wait until you to hit so big so they can take you to court? <clears throat> well, fortunately or unfortunately, I've never had really a song that's been that big of a hit. Um, <laughs> I mean, I definitely when I've done like my Scully Motion Picture Project, which did start out as a band. Um, right. You know, it was a little bit more collaborative in the earlier years, but I I mean, I pretty much write. I mean, I would say most of our songs that are out there, I'm the sole writer and producer. Um, right. So, but I did know what, as far as getting everything published, I'm always super legit making sure. And even if I did write mo like everything, I'm very much like the U2 model, which is like split evenly. We're all in a band. Right. As long as we're all in a band while we come up with these songs, even if I write it all, I'm still going to make sure it's all evenly split. Oh, so you guys, your band agreement's always 25% or or whatever equally it is amongst however many people every time? Well, I mean, I guess we, ne we never really had the conversation, but I'm, I'm gonna, any band I'm in, I'm usually the most driven <laughs> <laughs> um, and the one who's, who's going to be the most um, kind of focused on getting things done. So, um, you know, when it comes to like, hey, getting stuff published out there, uh, I I'm going to be the, the one that's going to do that work, put the work in to do it. Um, and I will tell people like, hey, if we're in a band together, even if I write the music, when this song is getting out, it's still going to be even because to me, it's just not worth the drama. Here's a question I have, though. And Sam, you would know the answer to this. So if you can go seek royalties from your album, let's say you were in the band, not in the band anymore. You still right. get royalties from the album being sold. But if you helped write the song, like let's say you're the guitarist, right? You help write mm -hmm. the song. You, the guitarist is no longer in the band. The new guitarist comes, has to learn all those songs. He mm -hmm. plays the concerts with the band, the same exact right. guitar riffs. Right. Why shouldn't that guitar player make money from some of the ticket sales since he's the one that wrote the song that the guy's playing at the concert? So it depends on how that band member exits at that time and what kind of stuff is, is signed. Most of the time, hey, dude, you're out of the band. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, <laughs> yeah. man. And that's usually what goes down. And then there's bitterness and forever. And then there's hate within the within that local community uh, in Vacaville or something like that. Forget you, Papa Roach. We don't like you anyway. <laughs> like, you know, something like that. But once that song hits a certain, uh, certain notoriety via, say, on the radio, terrestrial radio, maybe even goes gold, uh, uh -huh. the gold or platinum or something like that. There's and there was nothing signed um at the time that 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 band member left there's a good chance you could take them just much like mr krishner did and try to take them back to court and say hey i never got my royalties from any of these songs that i helped create the baseline or i helped arrangement and helped with the arrangement yes there is a chance you could you could do that so bands if you have exiting members have them sign ndas have yep. them sign. And then when you create a song, everyone needs to have, you know, a, a, a band split agreement before that song is published because you, you're you like, going you to like, get you, caught up. You like how I said, yep. When I have no idea. I'm just like, yep. Yep. That's exactly. right. <laughs> you listen, that's right. That's <laughs> exactly right. I have no clue. I'm just like, I'm used to you. it. I'm hey, used to it. Ezekiel you're thinks you're being it. Yeah, Ezekiel be mean thinks you're serious, but yeah, this is all blah, 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 to yep. Sebastian. That's what it's I was like, just saying, Sam. Exactly oh. what you just said. I just said that, you know, yesterday. <laughs> but yeah. Know, like, them. One thing I think, especially for for those that are also producing and releasing independently, um, I, I think sometimes people forget is that because if you get published as a writer, there's still a, a publisher side of it. There's a writer side and a publisher mm -hmm. side. And depending on which agency you're signing up for, they will treat them differently. Like I, I'm ASCAP for, for me, and I know that I have to have a separate publishing um, registration from writing. So if I'm doing everything myself, um, if I, I need to have both accounts to get 100% of everything. Uh, whereas that if, if you're with BMI, um, you can be just a writer. And if you don't have a publisher, you can still get all 
your royalties directed to you. You don't need to have a separate account. So it does get a little bit more complicated, I think, when you, as I've been learning since I'm about to release an album with a lot of collaborations on it, it's like, okay, it gets a little more complicated to, you know, if you have people kind of broken up, uh, broken up different agencies. They, um, But just something to, I, I know I learned, it's like, oh, I didn't realize that. ASCAP, BMI, depending on which one you're going to go, there's there are slightly different rules. Right. Huh. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that was another. Well, he said. I, I said the same thing to someone else also yesterday about. No, I'm well, just kidding. Let's take a quick look at uh, our last song, uh, "Fire from the Gods," featuring Young Mosh, and the song is called uh, "Soul Revolution." Right here on the Loud Spot. <laughs> There's always something trying to break me Fuck what they say in from the fire I am prison My motto for my ever said it I don't listen Fuck the vibe killing bread I'm never descending Never got me down Look at the sky Yeah, find my place I'm on this part of gravity It holds the weight Rock my foot is still in my lane Not in your face I'm on my days I'm in the haze The sun I praise Under the rays Under the light I let it shine I feel divine I'm feeling out the spirit It's a my hell, I scream Feel it in your heart, feel it in your soul Feel it in your blood and you'll know It's a revolution Soul revolution Feel it in your heart, feel it in your soul Live by the code This is a revolution Soul revolution Salam again My spirit's infinite W Boss, who is in a uh, a band called Andrew W Boss. It's his own. I was going to ask, how'd you come up with that name? Just <laughs> there was simple. a lot of thinking. Yes, All right. Took a long and you, time. you guys are you guys are getting ready to go on tour. I guess in April. Uh, you guys are kind of. Which is, I was looking at your tour schedule, right? And yeah. it's kind of you're going from Salt Lake City, Utah, where you guys are from, and you guys are ending it in was in Idaho. Yeah, northern Idaho. I know. But then you're also hitting like New York, uh, South Dakota, maybe Colorado, 
uh, New York. You're going like all over the place. Is there like a route that you're following to go there and then come back? Yeah, they, so we go from here to um, Casper, the Sioux Falls, over through the Midwest, over to Boston, and then New York, and then we go down to Florida, and then we come back up to Denver and Montana and Idaho. So it's like a whole month like, long tour. Um, yeah, it's like five weeks, God like damn. twenty. It's it's like twenty two shows or some twenty shows. I think it will. Yeah, I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. This is all him. He... Up. I was thinking Sam might have set this tour, and I was like, no, Sam's no. a little more, more like precise with where he's going. So you guys are gonna be doing long hauls across the country, which is cool that you're doing that. But I'm sure when you're done, you'll you'll be happy that you're finally home. It wasn't the first time he's done long hauls. This guy's been on a road warrior with Twisted and and yeah, uh, who else, Andrew? Uh, yeah, you've been out there for a while, banging it up on the road. Yeah, we've done like a hundred shows with Twisted, about a hundred shows with HPE. We've toured with Attila, um, some shows with Nonpoint, Global Flex, Saliva. We've toured with Bobby and Saliva. Bobby treats us really well. So we've done like a lot of touring, but the problem that we had on this tour is that every fucking band in the universe is touring in April and May. So <laughs> right. there, there were like a lot of spots. <laughs> There were yeah. like a lot of spots that we wanted to hit that there just wasn't anywhere open. Everything was already scooped up. So we're like, there, you know, like we wanted to hit Nashville and we wanted to hit Atlanta and like a bunch of different places. But it like post COVID, every band who wants to tour is going on tour in April and May. So, well, let's, let's, so many of the times. Yeah, let's not forget there's just so many bands touring, period, end of story. Every day there's a new band that is going out on tour. Whether or not they should be touring is, you know, <laughs> who said, she said. I will, uh, you know, I have my own reserve opinions about that uh, a lot. Uh, but God I just think them. that. <laughs> do what? Bless you, I think. I said, God bless them. They're going to hit yeah. the road. God bless them. Yeah, exactly. And but it's unfortunate that and then bands that do want to tour usually can't get into a venue or book a venue due to the fact that someone else is already there that night. And that's what booking agents have. Trust me, we have a pro I we just got bumped today from our slot, or we were asked to. Let me rephrase that. We were asked to by the venue. Hey, can you do a day before or the day after for for a certain matter of fact for your tour, Andrew? <laughs> and oh, yeah. I said I was like, well, they can't do the next day. They can do the day before. So that's good. At least, you know, now I can fit in another city, potential city like San Diego. Um, you know, it's our Vegas date. He asked us if we can move our Vegas date uh, because he's got a really big uh, headlining act. And you know what that means? That's favoritism for me right there. And they're going to give us the same guarantee on a Tuesday night as they did on a Wednesday night. We're all there. Where yeah. everyone's happy, so um, we're gonna we're now gonna be able to probably put in a San Diego date now or something like that, where I think both bands, uh, Widow Seven and Andrew W. Boss, need to be. So, yeah, right. I love I love San Diego. Yeah, <laughs> I was I did, I did get a press release uh, for you, so I was doing some online research uh, right. about Andrew W. Boss, and a lot of the news I found was like old news. Like, I was like, oh, this is going to be good. Oh, this happened like three years ago. Never mind. Or yeah. then, so I, I did read a story. I think the band from about 2016 or so was, is your brother in the band? Was there some sort of argument that happened and your brother wound up playing for you guys? Something like that. Yeah. So I was in, a, I was in another band and I decided to tell them to fuck off. And um, <laughs> I had some shows that were already booked. And so I kind of talked to these guys. So two of my brothers are in my band. And they're also in another band called Poon Hammer, which is their band. Right on. Their band. Yeah. And so I've had a couple shows with Seven Dust and Tech Nine that were lined up. And we had a show at the Whiskey A Go Go with um, Skindred and Head PE. And so I kind of like talked them into coming and playing. And then they kind of turned into touring and making albums and all this. And so it's, Years later, we're just the boss crew, and we just fucking do you, as much as we can. You seem so calm 
When he I'm is. Talking to you. I, but then, I, then I hear your music and you're like not calm. No. Like you're like going after it. And I'm like, then you hear like, hey guys, what's going on? Uh, today? Yeah. I was the same way when I got up, when I was looking over his stuff, I was like, okay, he might, you know what? He might suffer from some kind of mental disability. <laughs> he might. He he might be um, over medicated. Um, all these all these things were in my head before I even talked to him on the phone. And then he went off and and, and but you look at his persona online and his, his stage presence and it's exact opposite. I think. Yeah. I think. And, and so I was like, "Do you are you are you this? Are you this?" And he's like, "No, no, no." He owns his own company, construction company, right there in Salt Lake City. So yeah, I thought. Uh, I thought I was dealing with someone that uh, either was very well medicated, um, aka like you, Sebastian. I always think you're all hyped up on caffeine, but you're not. I don't even drink caffeine. I know that's what's funny. So, hey Andrew, can I ask you a question? Well, um, do you is there a conscious effort on your part to preserve? Do you kind of stay maybe sort of more quiet and reserved so you can expend it all on performance? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I kind of, yeah. I kind of, I kind of, because I have, I, well, I don't really have anger issues now, but I grew up with anger problems and I was a really bad alcoholic and I was, I'm, I'm an addict. So once I had gotten sober, it was kind of a very conscious effort to stay at like this pace all the time. And sometimes when the adrenaline's going in, especially around my brothers, like, when I get around my brothers, it kind of goes up a notch just because my whole goal is to say something ignorant that will make them spit their drink out their nose or something. You know, like, <laughs> just constantly saying bullshit to each other. But once we hit the stage and once it's like time to go, then like Dave Chappelle has this, uh, he did this episode of Comedians in Cars getting coffee. I can't remember what it's called, but with Jerry Seinfeld. Right. And he talks about the same thing. He talks about kind of like, like when I'm on stage, I get to be the real me. Like I yeah. get to, I get to get up there, and I, and that's the real person. Is this crazy loony guy that screams and jumps around like a retard? And and Dave Chappelle said it really, really well. And I was like, okay, that's kind of like that's the best way I've heard somebody put it. But that's kind of like this is the re the reserved Andrew, and then on stage I get to be like my real personality without cool, consequences. <laughs> let's play, let's play. We, don't, we got a short amount of time, so let's play uh, your new song. Then we'll get, get your socials and all that stuff before we get get you off the show. Uh, Back from the dead, Andrew W. Boss. This song is featuring uh, Phil Morrow, right? He's a rapper out I think out of Colorado or something like that. Denver. Yeah, Denver. 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 Okay, mm -hmm. let's let's jam this song, Sam. Me. Right back again, made a gamble with my life, now I have to win. Find the boss, do a trap again, watch the love between the scroll and the rap again. I said forever and I meant it, but I knew you lied. Bury me without a prayer, but you know I will die. I Back from the tears, I'm asking you even this every soul in a place get off. Let out the rain, I'm asking you even this lift and go give up. Back from the tears, I'm asking you even this every soul in a place get off. Let out the rain, I'm asking you even this every soul in a place get off. Hands wrapped around my arm, you struck me with an ass in your face. Your love is killing me. You're killing me with the last thing you say. Yeah. It used to be a hand that would aim to hold, but now the wrap around my neck in a stranglehold. But the pain is gold, with a pair like us, it's insane to fold. All in for life, this love ain't right, but that's alright with me. My wife, so turn the knife if just so I can bleed. Back from the dead, arise when you're in this every soul in a place get off. Let out the red, arise when you're in this let the anger give up. Back from the dead, arise when you're in this every soul in a place get off. Let out the red, arise when you're in this every soul in a place get off. Hands wrapped around.
Let's get your website and your socials real quick before we get you out of here. Yeah, so my website is andrewwboss.com. And I'm on all the socials now, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Instagram. I'm on all the time. TikTok, I got a bunch of stuff, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, we it, talked about that earlier on. We, we, on we talked show. about that earlier. Yeah, we're that's gonna, a bad yeah, We're going to hit the whole West Coast. Sam's going to help us do that. We're also going to hit Texas and Oklahoma and all that in the fall. So we're going to hit everywhere. This is just the first tour of the year. So everybody come out and see us play a live show because that's really, uh, honestly, there's nothing like a live show. You can stream. You can do all that stuff. You can watch videos, and that's fun. But go to a fucking concert and and keep your phone in your pocket and just live your life, and you'll be uh, very happy afterwards, I promise. I could not have said that better myself. Wise words from Andrew, Mr. Boss. That's all the time we got. Peace out. Rock on, and much love. This is the Loud Spot outro by Nothing Short of Tragic. Is this all talk with no action? No. Is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the Loud Spot with Sebastian? Yes. Does Nothing Short of Tragic have his back again? Yes. Does everything that's good really have to end? Yes. A pin post has a pin show, so to get more episodes, make an order, this is over.